Hello, welcome from Disney World. If this video is a little bit different than normal, it's because I'm filming right here. As I film this video, I'm here on a mastermind. We rented out Pandora and went on flight of passage as many times as we wanted last night. And it's really perfect for this video because it's just an example of what you can do with your product shop. So my product shop, is making money while I'm here on vacation and I would love to see you do that too. In this video, I wanna inspire and encourage you to create your own digital product shop and I'm going to show you how to do that in the fastest amount of time because I know that you're eager to get this up and running. Hello, if you're new here, I'm Christina Scalera and I help people to start de-commerce shops. De-commerce, D as in digital, means that you are selling digital download products through an online storefront, just like I've been able to do over the last six years with my online e-commerce store, The Contract Shop. But you're here because you want to have your own MVP. MVP stands for Minimum Viable Product, and we're going to use that to get your shop up and running as quickly as possible. So a minimum viable product, yes, your most valuable player in your shop, is going to be something that is available for sale as quickly and as easily as possible. That means that it's not going to be a lot of work for you to get up and going. You are going to have to tell people about it, which I know can be a little bit more difficult for some of us. That's why I have this YouTube channel that teaches you all the different ways that you can talk about your products to your audience, even if you're not good at sales or you don't like selling. The point of your MVP is to validate any kind of product ideas that you have so that you aren't stuck creating the products for many, many weeks or months, and then it just launches to crickets where nobody buys your product. We actually wanna get your product selling before you even spend the time to create it. And the way that I do this is through something called pre-selling. You might be able to figure it out by what it's called, but pre-selling just means that I have an idea for a product. So I create a product listing. I list out all the things that my product is going to be able to do for someone. And I make that product available for sale. And I also tell the customer when they can expect that product to be delivered. So for example, if my MVP is an Instagram template of some type, I would make the product listing as if that product were already made and about to be delivered. But instead of being delivered immediately upon purchase, that product would get delivered at some time in the future, maybe like 14 days, 30 days from purchase. Your MVPs are really important because they help to validate that you're on the right track and that your customers are willing to buy from you. So how do you create your MVPs? How do you decide what you are going to pre-sell? The first thing to do is research. You want to actually get out there and talk to the people that would be your customers if you had your products available for sale today. I know you probably are going to have a lot of product ideas, probably more ideas than you have time to create them. And that's totally okay. Just know that as you are creating your products, there is always time to create more and to pre-sell more in the future. So I want you to pick your best and favorite ideas, the ones that you're most passionate about, or the ones that you found through research that your customers are the most excited about, because that means that they will most likely buy them. Hopefully your passion and your customer's passion overlap, because that's a business that's super sustainable and it won't burn you out, but it doesn't always work out perfectly. So just know that even if you're not as excited as your customers would be about getting that result. It's okay. You'll be excited once you see them getting results from your products. Once you've done the research, the next step is to make sure that you are targeting the right niche. If you don't want people to be adverse to spending a lot of money with you, don't use words like free. Use words that people in your niche would use. Words like complimentary instead of free. You can also use little specific terms that only people in your niche would get. So for example, if you are selling something that has to do with Star Wars or you just like really like Star Wars, you could use references to the Mandalorian and Baby Yoda and all that kind of stuff and really hone in on your niche just by alluding to the fact that you guys are similar or you might have similar interests or that you understand exactly where they're coming from because you're one of them. The third thing to do is to make sure that your MVP, your minimum viable product is on some sort of platform and it's available for sale. This could be as simple as sending someone a PayPal link. It could be as simple as having a landing page that has some kind of checkout feature. It doesn't have to be complicated and fancy. So I love Squarespace to get started with this. I love Funnel Gorgeous to get started with this. But if you're using some other kind of platform, don't worry, you can use what you have available. There's lots of different ways to do this. There's no one right way. So don't get too hung up on the tech or the tools that it takes to get this done because 
no matter what anyone else is using, whatever you have available to you that you've already paid for or that's free, those are great options for getting started. The fourth step is to test your minimum viable product. This just means that you actually get out there and start to sell it. You talk about it. You tell people what kind of results that they're going to get. You tell people what they'll be able to achieve once they purchase your products. And then you start to create the products because once you are selling it, then you need to fulfill those pre-sale orders and you need to make sure that people are enjoying the exact results that they are getting from the products that they bought from you. As your product is selling, you're going to get some great feedback. It might be a little bit hard, but it's really awesome because it helps you to iterate and improve the product over time so that you have the best possible product. And with every generation that goes out, you're going to have less refund requests, less customer support inquiries. It's just going to be a better situation for both you and your customers. So don't worry. This is a normal part of the sales process. Encourage feedback. Try to get as much of it as you can so that you can continue to make your products better and not all of it is going to be bad. Actually, most of it is going to be really awesome. And you're going to get some great testimonials that you can then use to further sell your product to even more people. So the fifth thing to do is just to keep looking at what products are selling for you and keep looking at what your audience wants. The most important thing you can do is listen to them. And when they tell you what they want, what kind of results that they want, the next step of the next level of the products that they want, make sure that you hear them and you start to offer those things for sale. You can offer it as a minimum viable product, which can either be a pre sell listing or maybe just the first generation, the first iteration of the type of product that you'll ultimately have for sale. So for example, maybe you'll ultimately have some sort of huge signature course, but you start off with a template pack and you just see, is this something that people would be interested in? You might mess up a lot as you're getting started and that's totally normal. It's part of the process. I hope you've seen through my videos on this channel, if you've watched enough videos, how much I've messed up. I have a lot of videos about the mistakes I've made over the years for a reason. It's because I messed up a lot. So as you're getting started, there really is no right or wrong. It's just whether you get started or not. And I would really encourage you to get started today with this minimum viable product. It's important for you to test out the bare minimum features, make sure that it is going to sell and that you're not wasting your time. I go into even more depth about pre-selling on the next video on your screen. So wherever that just popped up, make sure you click it because we're going to take you by the hand and show you exactly what we mean by pre-selling. I know we touched on it a little bit here, but we're going to go into depth in that video. Next week, we are covering a little bit of a different topic. So I am going to keep that a secret for now, but I will see you there.